Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today to dye some roving with our sponsor Jessica Parco. Uh, right here I have 100 grams of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes roving. This roving is 100% Peruvian Highland wool and it's a fiber that I love to both knit and dye with. I am arranging it here in this pan in sort of just a random fashion. Uh, I just wanted to get it laid out and spread out as much as possible, but ultimately we are going to be layering colors on top of each other. This is a technique I love to do with yarn, but I haven't tried it yet on roving. I pre-soaked the fiber for a couple hours at room temperature in some plain tap water with no vinegar, but you definitely could soak for longer or probably even shorter. On top of the fiber, I am going to add four cups of water from our pre-soak. And then after checking the coverage, we are in a nice low immersion situation, but I want the fibers to spread out a bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and add another two cups of our pre-soak liquid. Jessica's fiber is nice and spread out, but I do want to add some acid before we start heating it. I'm going to go ahead and add one, two, three, four tablespoons of white vinegar. This is a little higher than I might normally start with. I think our total water volume, if you include what was in the fiber, is probably six to eight cups. Um, but I want to make sure that the colors do start striking quickly. I'm not planning on flipping the fiber as we dye it. I'm hoping to add enough that we get color saturation on the bottom side as well. But uh, let's go and get started. The goal today is to create a lot of depth and dimension. I overall want the fiber to read a really deep purple. And to give this dimension, I'm gonna pick a lot of really um, similar kinds of colors. I'm gonna pick some navies, some blues, bright and deep. Um, we'll take some deep purples in addition with maybe some deep reddish purple colors as well. And so then when we layer these on top, we'll end up with a purple fiber, but it'll have different undertones that sort of shift throughout the fiber, giving a really, hopefully, a really tonal, beautiful, deep, saturated yarn. That's our goal. <laughs> I have a lot of Derma and Jacquard 1% soft solutions that I mix. One of the colors that I mixed, especially for today, is a 1% stock solution of Dharma Electric Violet. This is the color that I plan to layer over everything towards the end. But I sort of wanted to give a sense of where this tone starts. It's sort of a true purple. We've got some espresso bean, which is a deep purple sort of on its own. Um, there's not a lot of brown in it. Next, I want to add some Jacquard Brilliant Blue, sort of some bits of this. These colors are gonna spread out, um, probably more so than if this were yarn, um, but I'm hoping that it'll also sink into the fiber towards the other side. And I suppose I can help some of that by like, in some of these spaces, adding some color in there so we get some more that goes down towards the bottom. But you can see in this um, electric violet that I added first, just how much that that has spread out already. Next, I have some gunmetal, and I am just going to do some little drips of it around. Um, it, the color should spread out a fair amount, but just give some deep undertones. I find that Jacquard gunmetal is a little more blue than Dharma Dark Navy, which I have right here. So there's some gunmetal that has sinking through, and here's the dark navy, which, I mean, it looks very purple until it heats up, but it's still his warmer toned than that gunmetal. I am happy to see these drips that I'm adding on top sort of sinking in to the fiber. That means that we will have 
some color towards the bottom. Um, but I'm taking the navy and just adding some drops of it around like I did with the gunmetal. Um, just for some more. It's not like that this is speckled because these will spread out further, but it is going to give us some nice dimension. Next up, I have some Derma Deep Purple, which looks brown at first, but I promise it is purple. It is not brown. It just seems to be brownish until we get heat. Um, but remember, we're going to be layering this brighter purple on top of everything, which will sort of raise the brightness of all of these colors. Next up is Dharma Frozen. This is possibly one of my favorite colors, period. Uh, that hole that I just poked into, these are Dharma squeeze bottles, and I just used a little... Um, uh, a paper clip to poke a hole in it and you can see maybe I need to uh, widen that a little bit. This bright blue is one of my favorite colors entirely. I'm layering a little bit of it everywhere. Um, just again the undertones and you can see that all of these colors are different. Some are way more pink, some are a lot more blue, um, but you know, this is just sort of the beginning and the under layer. I'm really, really curious to see what's happening on the bottom, but I don't want to pick up the yarn. Okay, looking at this, and I can go through and add more color later as well, but I do want to add a bit more of this Brilliant Blue from Jacquard just around, um, sort of up that purple quotient a bit. Um, and then we'll decide like what we need more and how we want to shift things when we come back to that more purple color. But I have to say, even right now, this is fun. So where we see these dots on the fiber, and I'm gonna reduce the heat so we have fewer bubbles, but where we see these dots it's not really gonna look that way on the final fiber. And that's because as you spin, they will get spread out. And so things will get even more blended and evened out. Um, I am going to poke that down, because that was sticking out. And, okay, this, I'm gonna check. Okay, I am seeing color go all the way to the bottom. It is nice and hot. I wanna peek in one more spot. There is some color going all the way down. That is great, um, which again will all blend together. I haven't really let anything sit and wait, but I'm here with our electric violet. And I am just going back and forth. This is our 1% stock solution, and this one I actually did mix up today. Um, and we will probably come back for more layers, but with this first one, I am just going on top. Um, there, there's some spots where I want to be a bit heavier. The problem with not having any of this measured is that, um, like, I don't want to, like, oversaturate things and add way too, too much color, but... I am really excited. So I made, actually I probably could measure, I made a liter of this color and I mean the bottle is still basically completely full. So I know I'm going to be wanting to add more color onto it as time goes on. But the way that we see, the way that the fiber looks after this has had some time to sort of spread out and sink in will help me decide okay, maybe I want to add some more of like this deep purple tone into some other areas or the same with like that espresso and spread those out a bit more or leave them like separate in those areas and just pump up some of the blues. But you can see that the, we've got all these different sort of tones in here already and I'm really excited. So I'm going to let this sit, I think, for 10 minutes and then we'll come back. Okay, I'm definitely going to want to add more color, but let's pick some spots. Okay, it really is sinking through, 
which is great. Um, we're getting really good color penetration. But again, these colors are spreading out a fair amount, um, which I think is cool. Okay, I'm gonna take some of the deep purple, just adding some moments of it, oh, sort of like balancing some of this purple. Same with the espresso color. Bring in just some of those moments through. Let's do a little more gunmetal. I'm going a little like before I sort of went all over, and I'm still going all over a bit, but I went a little heavier in some spots. And I'm going to do the same kind of thing with our navy by adding some more sort of drips all around, but a little heavier in one area. I plan to layer more of the blue and purple in here, but before I do that, I am going to give this 10 minutes, let it sink in and spread, so that way I can evaluate where we are color-wise. It's been approximately 10 minutes later, and I've got my brilliant blue to go in. I'm just doing some circles, doing some circles in some of these areas, layering this color, making it darker, making it deeper. And ooh, my frozen stock, which I made today, is still warm. And so this is a brighter blue, which is also going in fairly heavy with the blues, hoping for some good spread of this color. But again, all this is doing, each of these layers, it's going to add dimension because these little sections of color, those little like dots of blue, will spread and they'll blend. And hopefully it'll give like a really fun tonal-y feel to our yarn. Uh, sort of debating, and let's add a layer of our electric violet right now. I was like, we could wait and let things sink in, but let's go for the purple. The one issue I have when it comes to layering colors is that things are always way more, look more dark. Things always look darker when they are wet than when once they're dry. And so it's really easy sometimes to be like, okay, this is mega, mega saturated. I need to stop. And then sometimes I'm like, oh wait, I could have gone a little further. I could have added more color. I could have added some more dimension to it. So not sure if we're gonna end up going too, too far today or not. <laughs> but if you look at this right now, I just layered on a reasonable amount of color, but these undertones are peeping through. And you see those blues and some more red purples and some navies. I'm gonna let everything sit for 10 minutes. We'll come back and see how it's doing. 10 minutes later, you can see that we've got some color around the edges. Not all the color is going into the fiber yet, but that's fine. At this stage, I'm gonna go ahead and add more liquid. So what I have here are four cups of water, four cups of liquid, but there's half a cup of white vinegar in here, which is like eight tablespoons of white vinegar. Um, and I'm trying to spread it all around. And the difference now is you can see that our fiber is floating a bit more. I don't really wanna agitate it, but it's, again, at the surface, but also sort of at the bottom. And so it is fluffing out more, which is gonna allow it to soak in more of this color. Since that water was cool, I am increasing the heat, and I do wanna peek, yeah, we're getting color going all the way through to the other side. Pick one more spot, that's great. That is great. I am really, really glad to see that there's gonna be color on the bottom 
because honestly flipping this would be not the easiest thing ever. <laughs> uh, and honestly, I am torn. I am torn between wanting to both add more color and not wanting to add more color because I don't want to overdo it. Oh, it's hard, you guys. But okay, I'm going to add a bit more of our electric violet. Um, not as heavy as I did before. But I'm just sort of going in one last time. And so each time we do this as color set, um, we can have darker and paler and tonal patches of this purple in addition to those other undertones that we have included here on Jessica Parko's Fiber. Now, today's video is sponsored by Jessica Perko, and if you would like to learn more about how you can sponsor an episode of Dye Pot Weekly and have me design some yarn or fiber with you in mind and get shoutouts, you can find a link to the Cabinets Creations Etsy shop in both the video description and iCard. But now I am going to, well, I've raised the heat, which I will lower again once I start seeing, well, more than like one bubble every few seconds. Um, I will raise the temperature back up and then I'm gonna let this sit for 15 minutes. I don't wanna move the fiber a ton, but if I sort of tilt it, you can see that there is still a tiny bit of color in there, but a lot of the color is clearing. I am going to turn off the heat completely and let everything cool down. I think we got such great color pen, well, I'm assuming we got great color penetration here, but one of the reasons is that there's only 100 grams of fiber in the pan that really does allow it to fluff up, up and spread out. I could easily fit another 100 grams in here, but think about how much more it would be compressed towards the side, and so that would give more resist points, so we would probably end up with more white patches. We'll see how this turns out, but the heat is off and we're gonna let this cool completely. The next morning, the fiber is dry and it is stunning. I think the camera is making the tones a little warmer than they appear in person, but it feels very purple and indigo to me. I let the dye bath cool completely and maybe there's like a tiny hint of blue in there, but ultimately uh, our water is clear. And now we can very, very gently wash our fiber. But from first look, I'm really happy because I see a lot of color penetration. Um, and the concern was that we would have, oh, we're definitely seeing some bleeding, okay. Um, I was concerned that we would have uh, a lot of white on the wrong side, so I'm really, really happy. Um, and now we are going to gently wash this. Since we saw some bleeding with that first wash, um, I expect when I add just a tiny bit of this soap that might cause a little more bleeding to happen. Um, but it also just could have been some like blue liquid that was still soaked in our rose. So. I'm trying to be very, very gentle. Oh yeah, that's actually better than it was before. I'm gonna let it soak in the soapy water for a little bit, then I will gently remove the roving, add more water, and rinse it out probably two more times, as long as there's no bleeding. And then I'm gonna put the fiber through my uh, Nina Soft spin dryer and hang the fiber up to dry so we can see how pigmented it really is. I'm excited. The finished dry fiber is beautiful. And I feel like I can finally share the actual depth and tones. And as we look at this fiber, you can see some of the darker, more grayish purple patches, the bluer purple, um, a little bit more of a reddish purple in there that's throughout this fiber. And as it spins, these will sort of blend together a bit and become even more subtle. In person, I feel like I can see at least five or six different purpley tones in here. Um, and I love it. 
Jessica, it's almost too bad this fiber is yours because these colors are so me. And I'm probably gonna have to recreate this for myself at some point. The fiber really did suck up the dye like a sponge. Maybe even though there's like less surface area overall, since we had enough water and let the fiber, which let the fiber fluff up a bit, the dye was really able to sink in to the other side. If I flip this over, you can see that we've got lovely penetration on both sides and there's color all the way through the center. There might be a couple pale patches, but we were also just really randomly squirting this dye on the yarn and oh, or on the fiber, and I just love it. Jessica Parco, thank you so much again for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I hope you will enjoy this fiber and spinning it as much as I did dyeing it. And I have a feeling I'm going to come away to come back to this layering of colors again in the future. The Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop is filled with ways for you to directly interact with the yarn and fiber that I dye in these videos. In addition to the hundreds of skeins of hand dyed yarn that are ready to ship, you can sponsor an episode of Dye Pot Weekly where I will design a video with you in mind, taking into account your yarn and your yarn base and your color preferences. Pre-orders for the 2019 Hanukkah special are still open. Hanukkah will begin on December 22nd, and each night I will have a new yarn dyeing video. It's sort of a gift from me to all of you. But if you have the sampler, you can unwrap yarn that is featured in these episodes. So you can swatch, knit, and play with the colors while watching me dye the yarn from eight different nights. You can find more information about this in the listing in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. But eight different dyeing techniques, eight different colorways, eight nights, it's going to be a lot of fun, and I love putting series like this together for you. So, that being said, make sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. Outside of special series, I release videos every Tuesday and Friday morning, plus a lot of bonuses and live streams along the way, and you really don't want to miss any of it. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.